everyone. Welcome to our... Okay, we're good to go. Uh, welcome to our little presentation on public broadcasting uh, content uh, on Wikipedia, but also elsewhere. I'm Jan David Franke. I'm with Wikimedia Deutschland. And this is... Yeah, I'm... Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, I'm Kevin Goldi. I'm the founder of the project Wiglaf's Broadcast from the German Wikipedia. And today's the day we try to internal internationalize it. And yeah, hope that many of you are interested to do to uh, copy it for their country. And um, so yeah, it will be also an interactive session. So if you want to come to the front, you can come. <laughs> to give you a little bit of background, um, public broadcasting content is content that we've all paid for already through our licensing fees, so it should all be available to us to use, to reuse, to edit, to share. That's what we're working on. Um, we are um, trying to make sure that public broadcasting content is um, licensed under a free Creative Commons license so that it can then be used in schools and on Wikipedia. Um, we argue that this is a huge benefit for schools, it's a huge benefit for Wikipedia, but it's also a huge benefit for the agencies themselves um, because it allows them to join us in the fight against misinformation online. It gives them a wider audience uh, and it gives them, it bolsters their democratic mandate and it boosts their public reputation. So for us really it's a win-win. So let's go through it together. Yes. So the structure of our session is at first we explain you what is Wikilove's broadcast, then uh, how we got TV into the German Wikipedia. Um, there we have already two success stories. And then there's uh, room for questions. And if we have time, we will come to the last point, public broad broadcasting in your country. Otherwise, we make it after the session. <laughs> so yeah, what is Wikilove's broadcast? So, um, yeah, our project was founded in the year 2018, so from today, five years ago. Um, and, yeah, we are approximately in Germany 10 to 20 Wikipedias, Wikipedians or Wikimedians who, um, yeah, are working in the project voluntary, and, of course, with Dave, um, who helps us from the... Uh, Wikimedia Germany chapter and yeah we conduct workshops with um, the public broadcasters to ensure that their videos they pr provide us under CC license what's um, not the easiest way <laughs> to license things in Germany especially in the public broadcast and um, that their videos find then finally the way into the Wikipedia So, yeah, here you see a picture from us um, in the first session in 2019. We were one and a half months, no, no, one and a half uh, weeks before the first uh, COVID-19 lockdown. And, uh, yeah, there we were at the ZDF, the biggest broadcaster in Germany, and uh, helped them to place their videos in the Wikipedia and hold a workshop about how to do it, what can be made wrong, and so on. Then there's an other example, it's Funk. Um, yeah, that's always the example where we say, okay, this didn't went well, um, because they didn't cooperate with us when they started their project. Then later, during the time of COVID-19, we went to Funk and explained them how they can get their content in, into Wikipedia. But until now, nothing happened there anymore. <laughs> so it is not always successful. But um, the project with Terra X was so successful that we won the Wiki Oil in German, so Wiki Oil in English, um, which is the Oscar of the German Wikipedia, let's say, so for the best project. And um, yeah, there we've seen that. People find it really useful, not only the readers, but also the authors that we get content from the public broadcasters. So what are the arguments that we make when we talk to these people, um, politicians, but also agencies? One of the arguments I've already implicitly presented, uh, it's an argument we, we call public money, public good. 
and it's the argument that we already paid for this content. Especially when it's educational content, it should be made freely available for everyone to use. Another argument that's really successful with public broadcasting agencies, which shouldn't necessarily look at their ratings, but they do, because they still think they need to compete in a market, is that they can reach a much bigger audience if they CC license their stuff, if it's then used in other contexts, and if it's used on Wikipedia. We built a tool that allows us to track the um, clicks uh, that uh, a media file has on Wikimedia Commons. And once a uh, video is integrated into Wikipedia, those uh, views are pretty substantial. Millions of views per month are possible, and you'll see that in a second. Another argument that we make is that Wikipedia and the public broadcasting sphere have a lot in common. We have a lot of similarities. We're both um, ha have a meritocratic, democratic mandate. Uh, we're both against misinformation, and we both work for the common good. Can you guys think, this is our first interactive element, so be prepared. Can you think of any more arguments um, that could be made for why public broadcasting agencies, agencies should release content under a free Creative Commons license? If you were to walk up to your local public agency today and they were to ask you, why um, should we do this, what would you tell them? Um, I can give you the mic. Well, I mean, the the benefit for the broadcasters themselves is uh, totally clear that they will have global, they, they can show their content globally one for once um, to a wider audience uh, and then they can defend why the public should give the global broadcaster money because in the end it will be but the content will be with the public again so yeah thank you so especially in Germany um, they have right now um, big um, issues regarding the legitimacy um, and that's a strong argument because TC licenses especially relevant uh, or what the pu public broadcasters can do, but not the private <laughs> broadcasters because they want to earn money with uh, the content. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm from Canada and we recently just passed legislation uh, regulating the social media companies. So if they ever want to host um, news on their organizations so like Facebook, um, they have to pay Canadian companies now for their news content. So that means that a whole bunch of companies like Meta and um, I guess tw Twitter, but X now, they would have to pay for the content, but they don't want to do that. So they're blocking all the news content on those platforms now. So if we got this for um, our Canadian broadcasting company, for example, then they could put all of their stuff into Wikipedia instead of having to get their, trying to get Meta to agree with their terms and their legislation. Thanks, Chelsea. I think that's a really good and interesting point um, that you raised there. Does anyone else have an idea or should we move on? All right, let's move on. How did we get TV content uh, onto Wikipedia? We'll show you by using two examples of two things that were quite successful in the German context. The first one is uh, a program we call Terra X, or they call themselves Terra X. It's a documentary program. It's probably the most prestigious documentary program on German TV. It's run by the ZDF, the um, um, agency that we just saw in an earlier picture. Yeah, not to be confused with X from Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> not to be confused with X, exactly. Um, and they have been releasing short clips under a CC BY or CC BY share alike license um, since 2019. Um, the amount of videos they have released has now grown to over 350 short videos. It's constantly growing, two videos added a week. They, most of these videos find their way onto Wikipedia. And on Wikipedia, they've raked in over 80 million views. Um, they get more than 3 million views a month. These are numbers that make the uh, agencies very um, proud and also very jealous of each other. And this has been one of the ways that we've been able to get other agencies to follow suit. Yes, so, and what was the rate that we get? 80 million views of ZDF content in German Wikipedia only, so I think in English Wikipedia the numbers would be even higher. 
Um, so the first ideas we had already in 2016 that, um, yeah, from the voluntary community, but also Wikimedia Germany had some ideas, and um, that's very helpful from the ZDF themselves, um, from the Broadcasting Council. So, yeah, we found together in 2018 in a ro at a round table organized by Wikimedia Germany, by the pre predecessor of uh, Dave. And, um, yeah, in, at the same year, the German Wikimania, the Wikicon, um, that we found also together with the voluntary community and so on, and the idea to start a project, which we called in the end, Wiki Loves TV and Radio, later <laughs> Wiki Loves Broadcast, um, yeah, was born. And uh, why do we need a project for that? So, um, yeah, we can talk transparently to the community. We can show who we are. We can document everything. And in the next step, we would like to transfer everything to Meta. And um, yeah, to make it internalized. And in 2019, then the pilot project with TerraX started, and the first clips were licensed under CC. And uh, yeah, shortly afterwards, luckily it was successful. Um, we had our workshop workshop with uh, with the ZDF and explained them in, them in detail what works on Wikipedia, what doesn't work. And yeah, in 2021, we were awarded for the project with the BKO. And now it has, as David said, told you, uh, more than 3 million views per month or 80 million views in total. So let's give you a quick idea of what it is that we're talking about. What do these clips look like that have been released under a free CC license and have made their way onto Wikipedia? Can you guys... you just saw has over 4 million views on Wikipedia. It's the most popular clip on Wikipedia. As you can tell, it has very high production value when it comes to the animations. You don't see any human faces. That's an issue that's still going to be important. Um, but this is what it looks like when you find it on Wikipedia itself. Uh, this is, you saw the clip was in German, so obviously you'll find it on German Wikipedia. But as you saw, it was only su also subtitled in English. And you'll find other subtitles for this video that have been created by the Wikipedia community. Um, so, um, you can also find this um, video that we just saw in the English Wikipedia. When you look up the page for Taj Mahal, it'll show you this very animation. So, if you've ever st stumbled upon a clip, a video clip similar to this one, on a language version that is German, English, Arabic, Tataric, Bosniak, it'll likely be from this project. Yes, so, um, how did we get the content into Wikipedia. So <laughs> there are two complex systems. On the left side, you see the German broadcasting system, a bit simplified. And on the right side, you see the German Wikipedian um, system. And now we had to find the right people to talk to. So um, yeah, there's the Fernsehrat in this case who elects the uh, CEOs of the uh, ZDF. That's the Broadcasting Council, in case you can't read it. Yeah. And, um, okay, we had Wikimedia Germany, who isn't the Wikipedia community, but at least a place uh, where you find people who, who, who you can, where you can talk to. So, um, yeah. So it was important, uh, also in your case, if you want to do something like that um, to find the right partners. So not only the Broadcasting Council, but also uh, 
in the politics and so on. And yeah, we of, of course like to help you <laughs> in that way to find the right contact person. Um, but then we have the next question to you. So which public broadcasting agencies exist in your country and how can you get in touch with decision makers at these agencies and in the politics? Or don't you have any idea? Maybe you can tell us a little bit about where you're from and what the agencies look like in your country. And then we can move on to the next uh, step. Well, I just wanted to say as a visiting from the United States, uh, we do have an atypical public broadcasting situation. I was thinking about during your last argument, we don't pay a license fee on sets and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting is not directly owned by the government. It is, of course, there is a, it gets some money, but the rest of it comes, as anybody who's watched PBS in the US knows every few months, the rest of it comes from viewers like you. Um, we would, ha yes, yes, and often on-air phone, phone bankathons. So arguments for, you know, release, some of those arguments for releasing this on C on, under CC licenses, I know, some of the people at PBS would probably be amenable to them, but you don't have the moral arguments like, we already paid for this. You know, it has to be like, wouldn't this accomplish a mission? But I think the short videos like the one you just showed of the Taj Mahal, that's a place to start working with them. Thanks a lot. So maybe in the future there will also come English material from DW. So we can't promise it right now, but um, there are things going on. So maybe you can also uh, show it to them. Hey, they did it already <laughs> in our Wikipedia. Hello, uh, I'm Eugene Wandi from Japanese community. Our, uh, in our country, there are some uh, TV broadcasters such as NHK or Telebi Asahi and so on. And well, by the way, I am the one of the Wikimedia of the year this, of this year. And I have uh, some interview sessions at this Wikimania. And uh, after that, I have some interviews. So uh, when I or some Wikimedians have the uh, interview session with uh, the media. Uh, we try to uh, convince them the, to uh, understand the collaboration between the Wikimedia movement is such a uh, really valuable. Uh, maybe uh, it is easier than uh, uploading their contents on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, uh, it is not uh, a systematic way, but uh, we, uh, as a, one of the Wikimedia, Wikimedia of the Year, I will try to it. Thanks a lot. And I did some uh, research on the Japanese broadcasting agency, and they have actually dabbled with CC licensing in the past, so it's not something that's completely um, new to them. Um, that's, so that's something maybe you can bring up to them. And I, we can stay in touch. I'll give you my card, and we can... I can show you the research that I've done on this and maybe you can take this further. Anybody else want to talk about where they're from and what public broadcasting looks like in your country? Uh, so I'm from Indonesia and the, there are only two public broadcasting agencies. The one is the national radio, which we know as Radio Republic Indonesia. And the second one is the TVRI or the Indonesian National Television. So most of this media is obsolete because it hasn't been maintained regularly by the government and only peop old people watches it. It has a really uh, old, old style, but most of the broadcasts they give give to give to people is really old, and it's really hard to get in contact with us because they are watched by old people, and so most of the people who maintain this are also old, and it's yeah kind of bu bu bureaucratic because it exists under a ministry, and we have a hard time contacting the ministry, and so the best way to us is not to convince public broadcasting agencies, but instead the commercial, because some of the commercial broadcasting agencies have licensed their videos under CC. For example, we have like two that have regularly broadcasted all of their footages in with CC license. That's great to hear. I didn't know that that was the case. Uh, usually we find it a little harder even to talk to commercial broadcasters, but we should also definitely stay in touch all right, I think we're going to move on to the next 
next uh, slide. And this is uh, the second story that we want to share with you. It's on the Tagesschau, which is the most prestigious news program on German TV. We don't like to brag, but we got in some nice, uh, nice examples. Um, this is, uh, they've been releasing content uh, since 2022 under a CC by share alike license. Um, so far, uh, 78 short videos have been released. Um, near half of them have been integrated on Wikipedia. Um, I'm sure there's more to come. Um, if it's relevant and if it fits, it doesn't always fit. And uh, these uh, videos have raked in over 800,000 views already in less than eight months. Um, those are numbers that don't quite reach the other um, example that we've shown you, but they're still very substantial. And I think lots of people at these uh, at these um, at this agency are very happy with them. Um, and we'll give you a brief example of what this um, looks like as well. Guys, can you play the clip? Unfortunately, there are no subtitles yet, but this is a video on the difference between sex and gender. The fact that it's only in German, it's also made its way into the Arabic, the Tataric, and some other uh, very interesting language versions. So why and how? So if you use it, you can explain us why. It's the beauty of Wikipedia. That's it. Um, great, thank you very much. Um, so as you s saw, this is maybe a little lower production value, but it still drives home uh, the point that's trying to make very, I think, very succinctly. Um, and uh, you can find it right, right on top of the German article on gender, um, for instance. And uh, if should this be translated by any one of you, for example, or with a read-up or a subtitle, and this could also find its way into the English and the Dutch wiki, uh, and, and that would be even better, I think. Um, as you can see here, this is an example for TerraX videos. The videos um, don't only show up in German. As I've already mentioned, you can, everybody can go and redub them, everybody can go and write subtitles. You find that we have Dutch read-ups, Latin read-ups, and Welsh read-ups. So there's some people that are very active in that community. And we have subtitles in all sorts of languages, Catalan, Esperanto, um, French, Spanish, English, obviously. And sometimes these videos also make the media of the day. And we would be very glad if uh, there will be also English read-ups in one day. English read-ups obviously would be a huge step forward. I think with English read-ups, you would be able to get a lot of these videos into onto the English Wikipedia, and they would drive up um, the, the view count even more, and they would get even more agencies interested in doing something like this. So this really can be a snowballing um, system. But it doesn't have to be explanatory videos like the ones that we just saw. It can also be videos um, similar to ones that have been released by the Deutsche Welle, which is Germany's foreign language um, uh, agency. And um, they have been releasing, they have released 14 clips of their daily drone under CC BY 4.0. All of them have found their way onto Wikipedia. There is a high demand for stuff like this in the community for simple footage that uh, just complements the text without, uh, without making a big fuss. Um, the advantage is that factual mistakes or simplified depictions are hardly possible because you're just showing how things work and how they look like and maybe what they sound like. Um, and they often come with good production value, although a good atmospheric background now is, is, is quite desirable. And uh, I think we do have the time to watch an instance of this one as well, if you guys don't mind clicking a third time. As you can see, they're all on Wikimedia Commons, these videos that we've been watching. Yeah, no, it hasn't any audio. Yeah. Um, we always like to have uh, the natural sound on it, but um, yeah, in this t this case, it was a um, drone. <laughs> um, 
which filmed it and um, yeah, we got it without any audio. But it is under CC, so if you would like to have music <laughs> behind it or on it, you can put it in. While we're watching this video, I already I'm going to hand out a sign up sheet. If you guys want to be part of an international Wiki Loves broadcast network, if you want to um, link up and connect and talk about how we can make what we did in Germany possible for the rest of the world, please do put up you put in your name, your email address, and I'll make sure to establish some sort of group. Um, but that's it from us for now. Um, and now we would like to open up the floor for questions um, that you may have. Um, Are there any questions? That's right. So one of the major problems that I see with media, whether it is text, audio, or video, is that either public or commercial, is that these kind of medias have a tendency to repost other media's content. So for example, they would like replace one or two sentences or like take a substantial portion of the other media videos and then claim it as, the, as their own. How do you ensure that these medias do not take derivative content of other medias? Because if this happened, it might jeopardize the CC by license that you use because it was taken as a derivative and you haven't probably asked the other media to use it as a derivative. Thank you. Um, so you mean why we can use it? Yes, might use this as a derivative and so, yeah. This well, but that would be allowed under a CC by share like license, right? You can make derivations. Use derivative from other medias, and they. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, no. In this, the, in this case, so we don't get whole documentaries. We only get footages, which are especially fine for Wikipedia because you don't go to Wikipedia and want to see a documentary. Then you go to YouTube or something like that. Um, so we only get short footages where the um, broadcasters have the whole rights on the videos. Yes, this is a, a stipulation that's very important. Broadcasting agencies only feel comfortable sharing this content under a free license if they hold all the rights. Otherwise, clearing those rights is very, very difficult and tedious. Uh, do you try to get all of the, ca like a full catalog, or do you try to get, hey, we identified 10 specific clips that we would like, please see those? Um, we try to get more than just a bunch of specific clips. We try to make this a more standardized procedure. So we do, we are aiming for for a catalog, as you as you might call it. Um, uh, this catalog is has natural limitations due to the fact that um, there's only a certain am amount of clips that these agencies do have the rights for. There's only a certain amount, number of clips where you don't see human faces because, in, at least in, under German law, you can come, come into all kinds of muddy waters with that. Um, um, and then there's a, obviously there's a, a, a whole bunch of clips that aren't up to date anymore that might be in their archives and they've, um, they, they're not factually accurate anymore so we don't want to have them on Wikipedia and they, they don't want to release it because their, their brand would still be on it and it wouldn't be a good, a look, a good look for them. Um, but, but apart from that, we are aiming for um, a wide uh, array of, of clips to be released. And um, because we make the argument that this is not just for Wikipedia, it's also so that it can be used in schools and it can be used in other educational environments. Even if it's not suitable for Wikipedia, we still advocate for it to be released under a free Creative Commons license. We can't promise that it'll find its way into Wikipedia because that's up to the community. Um, but we still think that this is a good idea, even if Wikipedia is not the only reason why they should do it. Yeah, and uh, one more point. So in Germany, they are not allowed to produce for Wikipedia, um, but they are allowed to produce under Creative Commons. So officially, um, they license it under CC, and then we can use it, but we don't have to. And it's always important, at least in the German Wikipedia, where um, yeah, maybe the community doesn't like a, a clip or something like that, um, to have the options to tell them always it's not necessarily uh, in Wikipedia when it's licensed under CC BY, but it makes it possible to. Are there any steps that you take to encourage people to, uh, I guess, know that the clips are out there for citation? Uh, or is it just sort of you let people know in advance? 
Um, so we tell always the broadcasters how important it is to cite. But in fact, um, Wikipedia cites also the broadcasters. <laughs> so it's not always scientific. Um, so they don't have to, if they uh, want to bring things to Wikipedia, just if there's any conflict, then we tell them, okay, uh, when we don't know where you have the information from, uh, the video can't be integrated into Wikipedia, but if you make it transparent where you have the information from, uh, maybe Wikipedia is wrong, so we can kick it out. And if I understood the first part of your question correctly, you were asking about, um, do we let anyone know that this content is being uploaded? Um, that's what Wikilaus broadcast is for. They serve as an interface between, the, between Wikimedia Deutschland, who is not allowed to edit and shouldn't edit uh, and shouldn't do this themselves, uh, and the uh, agencies. And they are the ones that are being um, invited for workshops with the agencies so that the agencies know how this whole process works, how the community works, how content is being uploaded. Uh, by the way, there's more than one list if this one runs out of space. Um, and um, they are also the ones being briefed and notified of, of, of new content being, being submitted. And then they are also the ones that um, usually are the ones that integrate it on Wikipedia, although it's free for everyone to do that. So any more questions? Okay, maybe um, we showed you a few examples. Uh, of videos, but which kind of videos would be relevant to for Wikipedia? Or not necessarily video, but broadcasting content. So this is uh, these are the other questions that we came up with to get like a bit of a conversation going. Uh, we already talked about the first one. Um, I guess Kevin just asked the third question. Do you know of any educational programs in your country they could don't have to be educational, but educational always makes it easier, and it's usually more suitable for Wikipedia. That could be CC licensed and worthwhile for Wikipedia. I guess this goes one step further from thinking about which agencies exist to what's the stuff that you watch growing up? What's the stuff that you are like, oh man, I wish this was on Wikipedia. This would be such a good fit. So maybe I can uh, come with a hint. So in German Wikipedia, we are always also asking the broadcasters for interviews. So why might be interviews relevant for Wikipedia? Any ideas? Maybe the interview was noteworthy. Maybe it was notable. Someone said something interesting. It confirms that the subject that the subject of the interview said something about themselves or about something, and it's sort of an inline source? Yes, um, but also often uh, people who get interviewed by the public broadcasters are relevant for Wikipedia. So if you only have pictures of them, you don't know how they interacted, how they talked, what opinion they had, really, so from a pri primarily source, and um, all of that um, makes them, um, or, or due to all the points, Wikipedia would benefit from um, interview, so from video material, like interviews. Is there any other content that you could see um, uh, befitting Wikipedia? So maybe not only audio, and uh, not only videos, but also audio material, maybe? Well, we've certainly included audio of people's voices in other articles, especially if they have a very distinctive voice. It's part of their, I can't imagine, I don't know if the article about Orson Welles has his voice, but anybody, anybody who knows anything about him knows that his voice was one of his greatest assets and widely remarked upon. Yes. Um, and sometimes you don't even have the uh, in-person interviews, not on Anna CC, but maybe the voices. So that could help, definitely. Yeah. I'm just thinking of an example of museums that often have like an informational display where they illustrate graphically some complex thing about tectonic plates or whatever. And that's often content they're producing that doesn't have people in it. 
that could be really helpful on an article about those concepts. Yeah, that's a great point. And you, and the the idea of showing a graphical visualization of something, I think, is something that, I mean, this is probably a more fundamental um, discussion in Wikipedia and, and in the Wikimedia movement, but it's something that could help Wikipedia keep up with some of the with with how other platforms are being used. I mean, Wikipedia does not want to be YouTube. It doesn't want to be TikTok for sure. Um, but um, if we look at how people consume information these days, I think a lot of people um, also enjoy visual, uh, visualized information. And so the more we can get that kind of information on Wikipedia, the more we can make Wikipedia um, resilient for the, for the future. Yeah, I was also thinking when we talked about interviews and why we have, have them, what about when the interview itself is something notable, something aspect? I was thinking if there's any British Wikipedians in the room, all I have to say is Sex Pistols on the Today Show, mm -hmm. and that is a moment everybody remembers and uh, is notable in the story of the Sex Pistols, and I can't remember if that was on the BBC or it was on ITN, mm -hmm. but it was, uh, but it was, uh, you know, good if, if it were somehow something that, a, that could be released under CC, we could put it in the article, it would eliminate having to write a great deal about it. Or Frost and Nixon, right? I mean, talk about a talk about it yeah that's a long interview but but um, also maybe after your question then um, also maybe fictional things what can be there relevant for Wikipedia if you think about it so probably this is just an explanation but after a bit of searching I found something like similar to this done much earlier in 2013 it's called the BBC voice project It's done by Andy Mabbitt in which he extracted uh, cooperated with the BBC and extracted uh, voices of fame notable English, English, uh, with these English figures who had their interviewed by the BBC, and that the voice is being used as a snippet in their respective articles in the English Wikipedia. So this might be an interesting uh, example of how audios from TV, TV show, TV interviews are being used for the project. I just uh, also thought about um, animal species uh, that might be um, endangered by extinction. So, um, of course, there might be photos um, or, um, I don't know, um, drawings, but um, it's a difference to see the, the animal, the species, um, making noises, moving, and this could also make sense. Hopefully, not every <laughs> species will be <laughs> extinct soon, but, um, yeah, this might be an interesting um, thing as well. That's a great point, and I think lots of, um, I mean, if we think about um, wildlife photography, wildlife documentation on, on the British Broadcasting Corporation, I mean, that is some excellent footage right there, and they're not going to release all of that for sure, but maybe a five-second clip of how a panther moves, um, why not? Uh, yeah. The BBC has dabbled with CC licensing in the past. They actually, they did that in 2005, uh, so a long time ago, and they did that again in 2009. It's been a while, but they're under huge attack, um, and so they're pretty embattled in the public discourse. This could be a way for them to, um, to get some good PR and to gain the upper hand again and show that they have a democratic mandate and they have public legitimacy and that they're, um, that they're there for the people. And especially Terra X um, is fam famous for their animal videos, and they gave us already some great footage of that. So it's really awesome, the project with them. I think the time is already almost running out. I think we have like four minutes left. What? One minute left. So what is left for me to do is I'm going to give all of you my card. I'm going to be really um, intrusive here so that um, we definitely stay in touch one way or the other. If you think about setting something like this up in your country, you, you know each other, okay? And then we will you be, uh, must also, message me. We will be also here okay. in front of the door if you have any questions. Um, Thank you. To us. Thank you. And uh, yeah, maybe we can go also to the, uh, to the yes. next room 308. I think there's Thank always you. space, space to discuss. And yeah, we would like to see you there or in our Instagram group or whatever. Yes, we will stay around um, for a little while. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions that you want to discuss off, sort of off the record, we'll be uh, sticking around for a second, as you said. And uh, thanks a lot for coming. Thanks a lot for talking with us.